I need to address something. Uh huh. The Patriots were acting wild while you were telling your scissor story. They were like, Bob is does is not happy for Monet. Bob does not want good things for Monet. Whenever something good happens for Monet, Bob is mad. <laughs> I was like, y'all. You should I say was... the patrons and Monet, because we all we all agree. We all. That's met. what you. Fe- that's what you feel in your heart. Yeah, I do. Right, but then we have nothing to discuss. All right, so tell me, what, tell me what's going on your, with your life this week. <laughs> Wait, so you saw these comments, and did you comment back? Did you reply anything? Now I wrote the Discord. I was like, why do y'all think I would not want good things to happen for Monet? Like, I don't. That is so odd that that people would be like, Bob doesn't like good things to happen for that. <laughs> That to me that sounds crazy, um, but I guess you and the patients feel the way that you feel. So live your life, live it, honey. Live your life, Rihanna. Um, what? how how well we're gonna talk about the topic. I'm very intrigued about the topic this week. But as for me in my house, I haven't seen you since the Lizzo concert when we would when we were in Indianapolis to see the Lizzo concert, and we didn't. So <laughs> people are very intrigued. They're very curious about. What time did we end up leaving? We ended up leaving, but I was ready before. Well, we were ready about the same time, but I text Bob at around like 7.20. So Wait, what, why were people curious about us? Because we made it a big deal. We were like, you made it a big deal. You were like, you're like, y'all, Monet is crazy. Monet oh, wants to leave for the concert. That was concert. wild. That was really wild. We ended up leaving very early. We ended up leaving at the, we ended up leaving not at, at the time Monet said. We, we didn't know the time about it. I said, but we didn't know the time you said. Bitch, I was ready before you. And after we finished the podcast, I still had to go and shower and get ready. And I called this nigga at 720. I was like, you ready yet, girl? He's like, uh, yeah, I just had to do one thing and I'll meet you at, at okay, the elevator. Just just to be clear, when Monet's saying she was ready before me, <laughs> Monet's idea of being ready before me, I literally went down to the front desk to grab something and came back upstairs. Monet's acting like it was like 20. I was literally it's dressed getting ready before. Ready. That's still ready was, before, honey. And also, I w- also want to point out that me and Monet were both at the elevator at the exact same time. You were not. In fact, we I was, a- in fact, whoa, whoa, in fact, I watched you come around the corner because I was already at the elevator. Okay, first of all, it is a social, so everyone, everyone knows me. Everyone knows the social contract is. If you text your friend, if you're the one being like, hey, you ready to go? That person is ready before you. Everyone in the world abides by that rule. If you have friends and you're like, and you're the one in the group being like, hey, y'all ready to go? That's the person that's ready to go. But when you came around the corner, I was already no, where you, you were. were coming out of your elevator. Because okay, let me explain this. My we room met at the hold elevator on. at the same my time. My room was down the my my room. So you come up the elevator. Bob's room was like maybe five rooms from the elevator. Mine was another like what I want to say. I don't even know yards. Yards feet. Mine was like another like two hundred feet down. So we left our rooms at the same it was time. Another two rooms. Another two rooms. No, down. because you were what, what was your room at the most three rooms. I don't remember. What, you what was your room number? Monet, just just be clear. Why, Jacob? What are you doing? Can Monet turn her gain down a little bit? Uh-oh. To be clear, what Monet said was two hundred yards. You think you were two no, I said football fields I said away? I said now you're too feet. low. Now you're too low. I, said well, I don't know what you said. It, it, I, I felt like I heard two hundred. I felt like I heard two hundred yards. There's no what way you, you heard was wrong. Two, there's no you were two football fields no, away. Two hundred feet, honey. I'm gonna need to. We're gonna need to play that back. Cause anyway, that's not the oh, point. I know. The point, I was right. The point is, you were literally a less than a thirty minute, thirty second walk from my bed, from my from my door. Okay, and then on the call, I said, "Hey, I was, I was like, hey, you ready, girl? You're like, yeah, I just need to do one thing." And then I was like, "Okay, so I'll meet you at the elevator at or downstairs at the elevator at because such my, and such a time." Because my key card didn't work, so I had to go downstairs and get a new key card. So, be, be, just to be clear, answer the question: When you came to the elevator, was I not already there? No, we met coming out of the rooms. Mm. So were you? We had the elevator before me. No, I was not. So were you ready before me then? Yes. Were, I was you ready to do your, it. were you? Were you just sitting in your room hanging out? Yes, I really was. Bitch, you know you fucking lying. I said I'll meet you. <laughs> I said I said okay, I'll meet you in the lobby. Then why did I meet you on the way to the elevator? So Monet was like, I'm ready. I tried to get back in my room. My key was not working. I said shit. I have to go to the front desk. No, actually, I went to the front desk to get toothpaste. I remember now. I went to the front desk. I was I was like, oh, let me brush my teeth real quick. I went in my bag. I was like, shit. That's right. I took my toothpaste you out shit because in your I had, bag. I looked. I looked at my. I looked at my. I said, oh shit. Oh, I, looked okay, my so bag, I went in my I was bag. Like, shit. Now nah, my bag. Shit, there's no toothpaste. I, I, I had I had a large toothpaste from the last thing, so I had to go to the front desk. I said, "You guys have toothpaste?" And then I came back, brushed my teeth, and then on the way out my door, Monet behind me 
not in front of me, behind me. Okay, we're Reiterate, so, not we're, in front of me. We're both on our way me. to the elevator. And also, I was meeting you at the downstairs at the time that we now said, which was I call you at seven twenty. But you I, weren't there before me. What are you? You weren't there no, before no, no, me. But my my case never that I was there before you. I said I was ready before. I never said I was at the elevator before. I said I you're was. You're not ready, ready till you. you're there. If you just text and okay, say I'm now ready, bitch. You're, listen, you're, if we you're, say, you're adding that. No, that's not. That's, that's no, not that's, a social contract. That is no. That is actually social contract. If we all if we all say I will meet you at mickey's at 10 o'clock bitch if you live next door i don't care what time you're there it's when you get to no. the spot if i live two hours away and you live next door it is when you get there it's no. not who's ready first it's when you get there so if we say we're meeting downstairs it's when you get downstairs it's not when you're ready sitting in your home on your thumb the, yeah, no that's different but when and, you're at, and, a, and when you're, everyone, when you're at a hotel when you're at a hotel everyone and change knows that. It, when you're a group of friends at the hotel and then all of us who like you would like me to put your friends in town no. or Y'all go to the place where the first, the, the one that but, we call and be like, and we said downstairs. Y'all niggas ready or what? Not, you, but you didn't get. You said you said you did not get downstairs before me. You I did never not say downstairs. Down. I thought I was the one who who messaged us. Anyway, that's just at the point. So we ended up leaving what, like what, around. Yeah, <laughs> what point are you trying to make? Because you, you, you're acting like about, you were ready. Like what time we left? We ended up leaving for the concert at seven thirty. People were curious what time we left there. We left the concert. We left. We left the hotel about seven ten, about seven thirty. But again, the hotel was like a five to seven minute walk away. So we got there probably like around 740. I'm trying to find the text that says, I, I don't have a text saying that you're ready. No, I, I called you on the phone. And I can, does, let me see if my phone goes back that far. I'll tell you what time I called you. Um, what day was that we went? Um, that was last Tuesday. Oh, here we go. Oh, we had called Chris Dunbar the podcast. I called Bobby Caldwell Tuesday. At 420. Oh, I don't know what your number. <sighs> anyway, it's I can do a screen. Let me I'm do not, a I'm not saying you didn't come at 420, but um that anyway, what what I would say is two things. One, we left, which 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 I think we said we we're gonna leave around four fifty well, whatever time, fifteen. Seven fifteen, yeah. And we ended up leaving five minutes later. But no, we did we not left leave seven thirty. Because I called just at, 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 at um because you I you think it took ten minutes to get from your door to the, the lobby? No, I'm saying so. I called you at four twenty, and you were like, "Yeah, I, has to, I just had to do one thing." And I think that's when you went downstairs to get the toothbrush, and you came back. So that all took for about five minutes. By the time we left and met the elevator, we got downstairs like around like seven twenty-seven or something like that. I, I don't know the exact time, but we did not leave at uh, seven forty-five, like Monet suggested, <laughs> which was absolutely. I still stand by that is. And also, not to mention, even though we left at the time we left, we walked in during Saucy Santana's performance. When we oh, yeah. walked in, Saucy was on, so we were already that that we were we had already been done been behind, and we also waited like a spl maybe two minutes because we were gonna catch a car. Oh but, yeah, but we just we just we chose to walk instead. So we also lost another two minutes deciding to walk. Which and it was about like a little less than ten minute walk. So we got there, and I, and I, I distinctively remember. I actually, I remember this vividly. Distinctly, wait, hold on. Is it distinctly? Is I said, distinctly? I said, disti I said distinctively. I distinctively remember. When, when do you use distinctively versus distinctive? Distinctly. Uh, distinct. Let me look. What well, you you will say like that is a distinct possibility. Like that is a distinct possibility. Like a very specific. I don't know when you would use this. You, you, you go ahead. I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up. I don't know if distinctly is a word. I think I think it's dis, I think it is distinctively. distinctively. Yeah, distinct. Yeah. In a way that is characteristic of one person or thing and distinguishes it from others. Yeah, yeah I don't think distinctly, distinctly is, is dis, Kimi dis, baby. Distinct distinct is a word. No, distinctly. I don't think distinctly. I think distinctively is from distinct, which becomes distinctive, which becomes distinctively. I no, think No, distinctly is a word. Um, distinctively is something that distinguishes one thing from another. Distinctly is something that is like incredibly obvious and apparent. Got it. So that hat, that vest is distinctively Bob's because Bob had his vest days. Or that vest is a distinct vest because it is bright red with polka dots on it. Mm. All right. So let me get to my point. So so we got to the thing and, <laughs> and I said, and I said, we walked through the through the metal detectors, and I looked at my old Nay, and I said, "Bitch, if we would have left on your schedule, we'd be leaving in five minutes." I remember saying that because we got there at whatever forty, and I said, "If we would have leave on your schedule, we'd be leaving in five minutes." <laughs> and then we walked in during Saucy Santana's performance. <laughs> so I still wish we could have left on the fifteen. 
but we did not make it on the 15, and we could have probably caught all those Austin Tennis performances. To be fair, when we got there, bitch, we, uh, we like went around buying drinks, buying like nachos, buying like all this stuff. Like we was running around, like we was fucking. But Saucy was performing for a bit because, girl, the tea is when we. I mean, we don't know so, that. We, we're we I we, don't know. I, we're using I'm, context clues. No, no, no. All I'm going to say is what truly happened, which was uh, during Saucy's uh, final performance, I think it was Walk or um, I think it was Walk. His, no, like, you it know, you was um, Booty. Was it Booty? I'm pretty sure it was Booty. No, I think it was Walk because I remember him doing the whole Booty with all the dancers. Then he did Walk by himself. Anyway, that, oh, whatever. Right. I can't remember which one it was, but during Saucy's last song, they cut, they, they cut, they just cut the song in the middle of the song. That, but, that but it's is not just true. the song. They cut, they, they cut, the, they cut the, song off, the song off and some of the lights. No, they, they turn the house lights up and they cut pull the, the stage, stage lights, lights down, down, cut the radio, turn his mic down. I was like, oh my God, like during the. Per- I well, was you know, gagged. I'm not sure why that happened, but I will say, Bob and I know this, like when you are at these venues, especially the big arena, like they're, on, they're running on union time, which means like they ain't trying to go over because, bitch, when you start going over union time, you are paying tens of thousands of dollars every like 10 minutes, minute, whatever, whatever the deal is. So, bitch, the show runs on time. So, like, that means Lizzo had to go on the time she's supposed to. And then Lotto was performing after Saucy. So, I think that, um, so I don't know what happened, but that happened when at the end of Saucy set. Yeah, we do not know why they cut Saucy off, but baby, they cut her <laughs> off. I was gagged. I don't know if she was running long. I don't know if she's running late, or I don't know if they were just like, I don't, maybe maybe they do it. Maybe they do it in every town. Maybe in every town they yeah, cut Saucy off. Of the show. And it's, and it's, it's part all of the part show. of the mystery. What's yeah. going on? And, um, this happened. Then, in, this happened in ACL too. When we were out on ACL day two, Boy George was performing. Um, what, what's the group? His group, Culture Club. I mean, their group, Culture Club, was performing, which is Boy George's deleting of Culture Club. And um, after him, like, so he's at this big place right here. And I will say, maybe. 200 yards, no, about, <laughs> about 500 feet the other way was the See, you did it again. I think you said yards before. I was being silly to say uh, because I- No, I think, I think back then you did say two football. I think that, no, I, 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 we won't I know. go in here until we, we can't rewind while we're doing recording, but I'm, I can't wait till this episode drop. I promise I said feet. And then so about 500 feet on what the other side- What if you're wrong though? What if you're wrong? What would you I do know wrong? I'm not. I know I'm not. But what if like, you are? I, what if though? If I am wrong, I will eat Colleen's dog dog food, Colleen's cat food on camera. All right, go ahead. And if I'm right, what do you are, will you eat the same cat food? No, I said you might have said that. You're definitive. Okay, I'm okay, not definitive. Okay, so You're let's, definitive. So, so let's say I'm right. What are you gonna do? Let's just say if I'm right, no. what are you gonna do? Literally nothing. I'll say, oh, you're right. You such a pussy ass nigga. Anyway, so that about like five hundred feet away. You know, I know. Let me change my mind. You such a dick ass nigga. Anyways, about five hundred feet away, Sophie wow. Tucker was not the perform- pejorative, not pussy the pejorative. <laughs> Sophie Tucker was performing, and like so, she was. They were they were starting at like four fifteen, and also and um, uh, Boy George had to be done by that time. So Boy George was running his set. So at like four twelve, he's like, you know, they're not gonna shut me off. I'm gonna keep on singing for you because you had to see me today, bitch. At four. 14 and 59 milliseconds. What I tell you, they shut his mic off, everything off. And Sophie Tucker went on at 415 because the, the, the stage opened beneath him. He fell through. <laughs> <laughs> they opened the trap door. So then so now I Boy George is what, just. <laughs> they're not going to cut me off. Boy George is just. But he went on doing his music like with no microphone, but no like amplification, just on stage doing his thing. I was like, this is crazy. Do you really want to hurt Also, me? anyone else was there? Boy George was singing like a lot of reggae music. And I think a lot of this was like his stuff. But I was so shocked to see how much reggae music that Boy George like has in his set. I don't know. Some of it was some of it was covers, some of it was his own stuff. But I was like, Boy George has a lot of reggae. I was like, well do you really want to hurt me has a slight reggae tone. Oh yeah. Too. Oh sure. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff like that. Anyway, you were saying something and I cut you off. Oh, so then um Lotto goes up. By the way, Lotto I think Lotto's on her third name now. Her name used to be Mulatto and now uh, they're called now they call her Lotto, but all night they almost exclusively called her Big Lotto. Is that like like People call I don't her. know if it's an official name or if it's like a nick. I don't know. If, maybe it's not an official name, but but I also find that Lot- Lotto is like she is like Megan Thee Stallion's this. height. Yeah, Bob is, I didn't realize how big, she, how like tall she was. All, first of all, Clayton County. Anyway, um, 
and she is uh, like 5'11", 5'10". Her and Lizzo are the same. I think she might be a little bit taller. She's Megan Thee Stallion. Lizzo is 5'10", though. No. She's she's the same height as Megan V, Tyra Sanchez, uh, not Tyra Sanchez, Tyra Banks, um, uh, Monet Jordan, Exchange, Jordan Sparks, Monet Exchange, Megan Thee Stallion. Lotto is tall. We'll tell you but who else know- is 5'10". Wait, we'll tell you who else is 5'10 when we get back. We back, but do you know who can't step? Who none of these hoes can step to? Who's still stunning on all these bitches? You know who? Malia, Malia Obama. Malia, no, Sasha Obama. <laughs> no, Malia. I think it's Malia. I'm pretty sure it's Sasha, bitch. What are you gonna do? You gonna go eat some dog food, some cat food? And I'm gonna feed you, feed it to you, ho. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. Malia Obama is. And uh, oh, 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 oh. I, I don't know how to find it. Malia Obama is six foot one. How tall is Sasha Obama? Sasha Obama, Sasha Obama is 5'9". Five 5'9". Nine. Five nine. You should have bet me. You would have won. Um, anyway. Can um, I tell you, yeah. I've, been, I've been a little... And then, and then Lizzo went, and it was amazing. Lizzo was re- really great. Lizzo is a really great singer. She she sounds... Her live vocals are so, so good. And all the dancers, the big girls. One of my favorite big girls from the show, because, again, I watched the show. The show was really brilliant. Her name starts with an A. I always forget her name. But she she became like one of the fan favorites on the show, like because her personality, she's such a good dancer, like she's so, like all the things. And so I so anytime she would come across the screen, the screen everyone would be like, wow! And Lizzo gave her like a little special shout out. Um, my homegirl Jayla was not a part of the show. I wish she, I could have seen her there, but um, the big girls were fucking everything. Lizzo was great, and it was just it was a great concert. It really was great. Speaking of fierce big girls, Delicious Gucci was uh, performing at oh, Saucy yes! Santana set. It was mm-hmm. so lovely to see her. She looked yeah. so beautiful. And I said, it that, I said it that night on social media, and I'll say it again. I honestly think that Lizzo might be the most important artist of our generation. I really believe that. No, and when I think about it, no one at her level is doing what she's doing. Like, Lizzo's music isn't like, my body's so snatched. Like, she, she's not like, my body's great because it meets Eurocentric beauty standards. Her her message isn't like, I got so much money, y'all niggas is broke as hell. Her her message is like, I'm great because I'm me. My body's great because it's my body. Like, I mean, Blizzard does have some, some, some beauty that is quote unquote Eurocentric, you know what I mean? Um, but I, but, but it's, but she doesn't like go in on that. She's not like, I'm, Lighter skin than these dark skin bitches. Um, you know Who's my waist that? is. No, she's not saying. No, I'm saying, but which artist be saying about light skin, dark skin? I don't know. I'm sure there's someone out there who's like light skin, team dark skin. It's all it's all over TikTok and stuff. I don't know that any artists are saying it, but there's a lot of like team light skin, team dark skin shit on the internet. A lot of that discourse. Um. And she is like really, and not only that, but her music is it has a sense of humor while being poignant. Like she can write a song like "I Love You, Bitch." But have it still be very the song, meaningful. Um, her album special is a really good album. I really enjoy the album. If you listen to the whole album right through the last track, she's like a, she she's talking to the audience about how like why this album is special and how everyone who listens to it is special and like how like why she made the album, which is a really nice. Just I, I artists back in the day, like not everyone used to do that, but a lot of like the end of the Beyonce, uh, not Beyonce, Destiny Child. What is the name of the, the album? The last Destiny one, Fulfilled. Destiny Fulfilled. When um at the end of that one and the one before that, they the last track was just so different than everything else. It was either like a message to the to the fans or like when they did um the Amen um um thank you, Lord Hallelujah. That one, like like I miss when artists like from the night from the nineties and early two thousands do the artists. Maybe the artists that I'm not listening to don't do that as much, but that was a really fun thing artists used to do. And I mean, and, and I, I agree with you. I think Lizzo is fucking great. I love how she sings about her body. But I love I think other artists do that too. Like Megan D. Sally, like I think Megan D. Sally and she sings about her body and appreciate and 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 and, and rapping about up f- yes how fierce it is but also like you know like how she she didn't say she she loves her her natural curves and and her waist and stuff like that so i agree with what you're saying but it, it's coming from a different place because of how megan looks it's oh just, yeah for it's, sure it's just it went when 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 tyra bank celebrates her face Versus someone who's who maybe has like a cleft lip or a so and so or something or something that society at large says is not beautiful, and then you celebrate it. It's not coming from the same place. I as, agree with that for sure. As as Gigi Hadid being like, I'm giving face face. face. It's it's just not the same. Gigi so Hadid I, did have had a song. No, if I'm saying oh. if because because of how 
because of how I said this is too much. Gigi and Bella Hadid no. out here uh, with fucking tracks on Spotify. Because of how traditionally or conventionally beautiful she is, and yeah. and Lizzo is conventionally beautiful in a lot of ways, but she's also um, beautiful in some ways that the world says she should not feel beautiful about herself. So when she sings about her body, it's just going to be different than when when Megan sings. You know, with a, with a, with a, with a ass this fat and a waist this small, it's just not gonna it's it's not gonna hit the same. I also I'm obsessed. I, I get up. Y'all know I've said this before about other people's teeth. I'm obsessed with Lizzo's teeth. I love the shape of her teeth. Another person I'm obsessed with their teeth, blue hydrangea, like the way that their teeth naturally or are, are. I don't know. I mean, I they seem natural to me, but again, I'm not a fucking dentist or an orthodontist. I don't know. But I'm obsessed with the shape of Lizzo's teeth. Y'all just Google pictures of Lizzo smiling. I love the shape of her teeth. I I I I really obsess over hands and teeth, and I fucking love what to see when she smiles. I I can hear my echo on YouTube now. I don't know if you just you raised because you it. screamed. <laughs> so before you were screaming, nigga. Um, but yeah, I think I love her. I love her teeth. I love her cheekbones. I love that. I wish. Would you ever get filler? No. Um, not right now, anyway. Maybe if my face sunk. I mean, if my face is full. It's it's juicing up. But, but you know, we, we know sinking. some of the girls who were they look juiced up too, but they just got ju- we, we know the girl just got a little something to make them. I was thinking about it. Maybe I should do a little filler just just to have a little. It might make you feel good. You should do it. If it makes you feel good, you know. But people say filler falls. I'm I I, I want to, but I'm so scared of everyone. But like, girl, get filler. But filler falls. Remember that. And I'd be like, what does that mean? Well, you can get implants, and implants can be taken out. No. I slice them on my face, bitch. I my skin does not heal well. I ain't trying to be sliced on my face. How do you think they put cheek implants in? You think they just cut your? I'm, I'm sure they go through back in? hair. No, they don't cut your cheek, but they probably go some in back hair. But again, a lot of people who get that stuff, Bob, these bitches have hair. Okay, people that get facelifts, they cut them up here. We, don't, I don't have anything to hide. Nothing, bitch. I'm exposed. <laughs> Wait, how do cheek cheek? They go in uh, through your mouth. They go through your, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah they, they will never see those. Upper lip, you. like uh, under your lip, like under your upper lip. Well, Jacob, yeah, have see, you looked at how did Jacob know? Jacob, Jacob looked into it before in the past. Jacob trying to get something done. Maybe. <laughs> Jacob actually has pretty, um, pretty high cheekbone. Jacob, 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 I don't know if what Jacob's done with his plastic surgery, but or if he has any plastic surgery, but Jacob looks like he has filler because he has very high cheekbones. Jacob has, Jacob has very, very great cheekbones. Um, but yeah, I so you you should get it done. And if you don't, you know they can take them out. And if you don't, and if, and if they're I'm not and interested, if, and implant implants, I don't think implants fall. So they saying, don't, but you can it's get probably implant. a lot. That's probably a lot uh, minded for the future. Cheek cheek implants are probably much safer for your facial structure than getting filler. The pl- so I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if you're considering filler, you might want to consider cheek implants. The plan of getting cheek implants to see if I like it, then in like a year of being like, uh, then going to surgery to get them out. That's sounds No one said crazy. a year, but also, but I'm saying like, but the, the cheek stuff will, if, if it's going to fall and you can't get filler out, I don't know if you can get filler you out. You can get, you can I'm, get, you can get your filler dissolved. Like people that get like lip impl- filler in their lips, like Juvederm or whatever, they they, they can put stuff in it to make it I dissolve. Think there's a point of no return because I, I think they, like one time, Kim was like, Kim was like, I got, I should, I gotta get my lips undone or or something. Dissolved. You, get, you, you get them dissolved. No, Kim is very open about getting her lips. Kim can't hide her that she got her lips. Done. Kim, Kim is Kardashian. Who you guys think I'm talking about? No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> but also, what I love about all these artists is how they're like married to their music. Speaking of marriage, Monet, wedding. That segue. I killed I it. Cannot. You're jealous. No. And I killed it. No, Bob. If you would have worked, you're Aggie. You would have worked it in a little subtly. Like, you literally just, picking up these artists, you're, they're married to their music. <laughs> you're I, Aggie. I, I, y'all, can please, can y'all please comment below and rate that transition? Please rate that segue that Bob does it. I'm very curious. On a scale of one to ten. Ten wow. being like, ten being like, Bob. You not want me to just have this moment. You, you can't just let me just do the transition and move on. You are so, you are ten so. Ten being like, Bob, you just nailed that. Honestly, I didn't you know, even I, recognize it. I used to one. think I had no, like, enemies and ops. Bitch, is it you. Bitch, it you. Oh, bitch, and believe that, yes, bitch, I'm your motherfucking op. I'm your enemy. Yeah, I ain't hiding, nigga. I'm right here. But we're not on level playing ground, honey. Oh, yeah, Five, you're right. Because, nigga, you under me, honey. You below Five, me. Ten, nigga, you my two. son. Use my honey. son. Yo, if niggas from Clayton County say, yo, let me tell you something. If 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 it was if if, if niggas from Clayton County had to fare one with niggas from Brooklyn, y'all really think that y'all niggas would really be out here, yo. <laughs> anyway, bust this topic. Marriage. What what, what what would you beat me in? What what? And what I'm in a nigga? And we're gonna we're gonna move on from that. I, yeah. We, yeah, we move on. And basically every first of all, outside of actually fighting. 
In every physical thing we've ever done, we've proven I am stronger than you. In, okay, in first all of all, it does not need to be just I strongest, have a longer reach than you. The strongest and, fighter. Have you ever and, seen those viral videos of them, of those little women fucking up these 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 trans women who are tiny as fuck, fucking up these big ass um homophobic trans Are you the tiny one? Are you the tiny yeah, one? Yeah. Tiny <laughs> Fucking up these big ass um transphobes. Yeah, size don't size and strength don't mean shit. Wait, are you the, are you the tiny one? Yes, I am. Per, you better work. You yeah, better, you better say you are the tiny of a tiny. Yeah. How many weddings have you been to in 2022? In 2022, I've been to two weddings. Um, I went to two weddings in 2022, both with Andy. All Andy's friends. Yeah, Andy always got some friends that get married. Andy always, Br- always, and forever. <laughs> and then, oh, there was a third one. So my friend Jenny Jaffe, um, who's a, 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 her and Andy were friends, and now Jenny and I became friends through Andy and her husband Dan. Shout out to Jenny, um, to Jenny and Dan. They just got married in September. Um, Jenny is an amazing writer. She's written, for, she writes for the Rugrats. She has, she's, she's a showrunner for so many shows on Nickelodeon. She's so fucking dope, so funny, so smart, such a good writer. Anyway, they had a wedding on September twenty fourth, right? Okay. And she really wanted me to come. But September 24th, if you remember, was the day of our New York show. And she was like, and her, it's like, I was at their house last night. They did this thing. And then she was like, you know what we almost did, right? Her husband was telling me, I was like, what? He was like, we really wanted you to come to the wedding. So what we were going to do was buy every ticket for your New York show for the Sibling Rivalry Tour. And (laughs) be like, Come to come to our wedding. I was like, Dad, y'all are crazy. Can they afford to buy every ticket for our show? Yeah. Do they have that much money? <laughs> yeah. Also, I would like your friend to know, Jenny Jeffy, if you're listening, I would have been very <laughs> upset with you. That would not have been funny. <laughs> they were that kidding, would not have been obviously. A I'm just letting you know. If you ever if you're thinking about that in the future, <laughs> that shit would have not been cute. That would have been a nightmare. I fucking love them. I love them. They're so sweet and very kind. They were obviously kidding. But I was like, Dan, if you would have did that, honestly, I don't, I don't honestly, know these niggas. I don't, I don't know, obvious. I don't know these niggas. Honestly, what a fierce move. I, imagine, Bob, also, to, that is something you would do to me. Bob, literally, Bob in the pockets. So I was like, Monet, when you were selling all, all, all your costumes, I was, I had a, I had half a mind to buy each and every one of them and then mail them right back to you. That is, that is some Bob shit. I yeah, but not to like cancel your show not to cancel your hometown show and your t- I want I want to be clear buying all of the costumes I would have I would have been very mad at you and canceling your hometown show to come to my wedding though that's not the same thing <laughs> I'll still that's be not, mad that's not on the same level I'll still be mad sure I mean your your feelings are your feelings Thank but that you. is I would like to be make it very clear those are not the same thing but um so I was supposed to I was supposed to go to that wedding but we were on tour I didn't go to that one so I went to two one the first one was in Boston um at this very nice wedding in Boston and then the second one was in rural Vermont and it was very sweet oh my god you're so extra uh was in rural Wait, Vermont I'm I'm reading something bitch this has nothing to do with you I'm oh I something. thought because your your screen your camera is such bad quality it look it looked like you're doing this. First of all, I am filming on a very nice camera. Make that. Let's get that clear. We can't Ms. tell. Um, how many Ms. weddings Mama. did you go to in 2022? I've gone to two weddings. Oh, you going to beat me so the- bad. Damn. Continue. I've gone to two weddings, both in the same month. My brother got married and Jacob's sister got married. Oh, yeah. How was the wedding this past weekend? Uh, it was lovely. It was a uh, Jewish Christian wedding. Mm-hmm. Um, heavy on the Jewish. Similar to, <laughs> well, what, the similar to what you and Jacob Jewish. would have. Go ahead. Say again. Similar to what you and Jacob were gonna have. Go ahead. Jacob and I would not be having a Christian wedding, and I don't know how. I mean, I mean, J- well, Jacob is culturally Jewish, but he's not really he's not religious, you know. But um, anyway, it was the service was the service was very. There was a rabbi and the minister who would like were like literally like trading the microphone like they would go back and forth and like the rabbi would talk and the minister would talk and the rabbi would talk and the minister would talk um there was something that happened during the service that i remember thinking to myself i know that some christian would be like see like see? what okay what happened was am i allowed to say this jacob so what happened was the minister monet has something to say this has never ever helped her remind us but we, but we did it anyway 
Just type it down, bitch. Type it on your screen or write it down somewhere. <laughs> um, so the minister was um, talking. The minister did her whole thing, and then she married them in the Christian way. She like, in the Christian way, we do this. And then the as the rabbi started doing her thing, like the rabbi was like, so. Like she was like, all right, so let's start. I mean, in some words, she was saying it better than she's like, let's start the Jewish portion now of the actual ceremony. And as she opens her mouth, the microphone was like, rah, 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 rah. like I mean, like it was like, like it was like work. I mean, per perfectly. And the rabbi goes, "All right, here we go." And then the microphone was like, rah, rah, and it was like not working. And then she's like, "Oh my god!" And then it started working again. She's like, "Okay," like I was saying, rah, rah. and then it stopped. It just stopped working. And I know that somewhere some Christian would be like, "See, mm -hmm. that's the Lord." But then that was my old toxic christianity not letting me go maybe maybe it was just me thinking maybe no, no christian anywhere would have thought that you're not wrong because have you seen this i've been i've seen a couple of christian tiktoks where they're like nope i had to walk out of black adam within the first 30 seconds of going to see it. a lot of christians are like boycotting black adam because apparently it's sacrilegious and it's like it's like it's like the antichrist movie have you heard about this no. Girl, uh, Christians are not happy with it. And I was like, and then so I was put this one today. He was like, I just couldn't even get through the first 30 seconds because I felt, I, I don't know about everybody else, I just felt convicted in my spirit for going to see the Black Adam movie. I was like, oh there was God. someone, There was someone on our Patreon or somewhere in our mentions somewhere being mad at me because of my talking about, like, Southern Baptists. Being like, I hate when Bob Monet talk about Christianity and, and Southern Baptists. They're, they're, I'm like, bitch, I'm talking about my experience growing up southern baptist i am talking about my experience growing up southern baptist i have very little um i have very little uh what's the word i'm looking for like i have very little grace for uh a lot of christianity and a lot of religion in general to be honest i have very very little grace well i just Let's take anyway. a little break, then you tell me more about give us your Southern Baptist heritage. I'm a very busy woman, and I'm always working on a different project, but one of my favorite things to do is make music. Now, you've all heard my newest song, Bitch Like Me, um, but believe me, I'm just getting started. I'm always interested in how other artists compose and produce their own songs, and I've gotten really into masterclass for learning about how different artists make their music alicia keys has a class that i absolutely loved it was very very fun and informative and i was blown away by the depth and the knowledge and the quality of the experience um now with the master class you can learn from the world's best minds anytime anywhere and at your own pace you can learn how to cook from gordon ramsay improve your acting skills with natalie portman or you can learn writing from Issa Rae with over 100 classes from a range of world-class instructors. Things that you've always wanted to do is closer than you think. Masterclass is accessible on your phone, web, or smart TV, offering classes on a wide variety of topics, all taught by world-class masters at the top of their field. Learn how to do anything from finish your screenplay to make Michelin star-worthy scrambled eggs. Whatever you're interested in, there's a masterclass for you. I highly recommend you check it out. Get unlimited access to every class and as a sibling rivalry listener you can get 15% off an annual membership go to masterclass.com slash rivalry now that's masterclass.com slash rivalry for 15% off masterclass anyway, I, mean, I, don't, I don't have anything to say about the Southern Baptist Heritage but uh, the, the, the wedding was very fun it was interesting to juxtapose it with um with um, my brother's wedding versus Jacob's sister's wedding because there was a lot of dancing at both, but the dancing was just so different. I mean, like Jewish people. Also, um, what's the, what's the guy who's Michael Rapaport said a thing today? He was like, I don't like Jacob. How do you feel about this? He was like, I don't like people saying Jews. You need to say. I if you're said not, this if, on the podcast. He was it, like, if you're I not Jewish, weird. you need to say Jew. I know a lot of Jewish people who are like who just who, they say Jews. But he was like, if you're not Jewish, you need to be saying Jewish people. That's how I feel. When I hear people say Jews, I'm always like, ugh, that's just, that, it just it just feels bad. It feels weird. Like, I should not be saying Jews. How do you feel about it, Jacob? Ritz? I I haven't actually, like, thought of that point. I, I, I think that's a response to a wave of anti-Semitism that's been prevalent in the mm. media and the world today. Yeah. Um, so I can see why that makes sense. I, I need to maybe do more research and like 
do a little bit of reading because um, like right off the bat it doesn't particularly bother me but i can see and respect why it would bother other people and i this is honestly the first i've heard of it and i need to do some more research because before i have a solid opinion that i feel comfortable being like this is my opinion work, yeah. work. all right so um jewish people love to grab hands and they do, it's called the horror. Is this the horror, baby? Just not. Is this the horror? Yeah. So they grab hands and they are like in a. They're like in a circle, like a bunch of little circles. Then the circles become one circle, and then there are circles inside of circles. They they grab hands. It's almost. I, I don't want to be disrespectful. It's almost like um ring around the rosy, or, or but they're all holding hands and they're and they're just like you know like kind of bouncing and like uh and then they go and a certain then they go all go in. I mean, I go out and I mean a uh, like a lot of it. It is actually very, very it is a lot, lot of, of <laughs> so, so the the one caveat with this is that because it was a Jewish Christian wedding, it was a mixed dance. The, the Jews started doing the horror in a circle and then the Christians joined in, but the Christians don't really know how to do it properly. So it became very Ooh. messy. And I would say, like, generally, if you go to, like, a Jewish wedding that's fully Jewish, like, we all kind of have it down and we know what to do and organize. But it was, like, a little bit messier. And then also, because the Christians were like, this is a Jewish wedding. Every time after that, there was a dance moment. They're like, oh, we're going to spin in a circle now. And, and there's not that much circle dancing. And, like, usually, <laughs> like, but we there's have a, one. There's, there's but, one horror. There's one circle Jewish dance. They play the music. And then, like, that's a wrap. We go back to the other. and like. This wedding, like every five minutes, somebody was like, we're starting a circle dance and they're like little circle dances. So it really just be like five people spinning in a circle. And then like across the room, it would be another five people. It was a little bit disorganized. So but now juxtaposed to your brother's wedding, how was your brother's wedding different? Well, I want to talk about, so the, well, before I, I want to keep it like, so they're, they're in, they're doing the horror and then there's also like lifting of people in chairs. You like put the bride and the mm -hmm. groom in these chairs and you pick them up. I've seen that. Um, and then there was this one kid, I don't think he was Jewish. He was like this like Turkish kid. And he, I think he was one of the Christians, but he was like doing like the Russian, like the, the down, up, down, up, down, up thing. Um, in the, but they were, I mean, everyone was going crazy for him. Like he was in the middle of this cir circle doing this down up thing. Everyone was going wild. It was, it was, it was very fun. At my brother's wedding, there was a lot of electric slide. There cha -cha was, slide. there was the cha cha slide. There was uh, meet me at the trap. It's going, going down. down. Meet me at the mall. Was there any R Kelly stepping in the name of love? There was not a single good. bit of R. Kelly played at this, at this good, wedding. Good, we were good. leaning with it and we were rocking with it. Uh, we were doing the Cupid Shuffle. Your cousin, um, what's the name of the one with the big booty and the green? Monique. Monique. Obsessed with Monique. We, you know, we might put a video of Monique right here. You never might. know. Might. Um, but yeah, uh, my cousin Monique was really living her dreams. Um, so there is, you no, know, there, there was, there was, it, it, but then also at, uh, Ellie, Jacob's sister's wedding, there was also a line dancer who taught us how to like line dance, which basically is the Cupid Shuffle is a line dance, mm -hmm. the ch the cha cha slide, the electric slide, they're all line dances, except you just know them. Like everyone shows up already knowing the dance. Mm -hmm. And at the at at the I don't think this is Jewish thing, I think this was a a white thing. There was this like guy instructing everyone how to do the dance. He spent like 40 minutes teaching teaching these dances and then we'd all do them so like he teaches 40 like minutes move. like he teaches he spends like time teaching it and then we spend time doing it so first it's that's like too much bitch minutes. i'm at a wedding i'm drunk i ain't trying to be yeah, and, no, and damn people dance. were drunk doing it and people were drunk doing it there were about 10 15 minutes of him teaching us how to do this dance and then we would do it to like shake it off by taylor swift and then another 10 15 minutes of him teaching a dance and we do it to like jailhouse rock by elvis my favorite part of a wedding is always the reception. The reception part when the, the service is done and you go to the reception and you get your drinks. And my favorite part of weddings, like, okay, maybe not favorite, but one of my favorite parts is the hors d'oeuvres. Hors d'oeuvres, bitch, when I, when slash if I get married, I'm having the fiercest hors d'oeuvres ever. 
hors d'oeuvres are going to be popping ten. Also, when like I, I love I love a good quiche. I love a pig in a blanket. I love a crab cake. I love a shrimp wrapped in bacon. I love like we have to have and don't try to get too fancy with your hors d'oeuvres. Don't try to get shit that ain't nobody had before. Don't try to get like frog gras. Would you like the frog no. gras martini? No, 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 no. Get a good quiche Lorraine, a good bacon cheddar quiche, and a third one for safety. A pig in a blanket. What is now quiche Lorraine. That's um quiche or bacon and ham. Yeah. Fancy, fancy. And then and then and then don't be basic and get just the regular circle ones. They make the ones in like squares that are a little more gourmet. That's good. You can do a pig in a blanket, but I would like to see a little variation or like a deviation of a pig in a blanket. Don't just get the fucking pigs in a blanket you can get at Auntie Annie's. If you're gonna get the Auntie Annie's one, be very intentional so we know that that's what we're eating. If you wanna do like maybe like bread on the bottom, the pig on the top, and it's like make it a little fancier, right? So I like really nice hors d'oeuvres, like the base, the classics, but like gussy them up a little bit. And also for the entrees, I'm not gonna be every most weddings, they do like a meat. Like a, a filet mignon, a potato, and like a vegetable, or like a fish, some rice, and a thing. I would like to do something like a chicken and waffles, some type of fierce vegetarian one. Like I would, I, I would, I would, I would, for my day, if I had one, I would dust it up a little bit. And um, I, what, how do you feel like the weddings you went to? Did they do like the traditional parent child dance and stuff like that? So I want to talk about the food before I move on because oh, yeah. a lady said something at. Ellie's wedding that I did not agree with. And I was like, well, she said, I don't agree with this. She what was table were you food. sitting with? Were you with Jacob's family? I was with Jacob's family, yes. At oh, Jacob's yeah. wedding, I was with his family. And at my brother's wedding, I was sitting with all the groomsmen. Like, I had to sit with just, it was just me and a bunch of guys I went to high school with. Like, <laughs> like who I have not talked to in, like, years. Can I add something else? So, at, at Colin's brother weddings, each table had about 12 wedding, 12 people on it, sitting around it. And then uh, we were at a table. It, there were twelve seats. There were only four people at the table, so we were at like the the island of misfits table. It was really great, but we, it was we had a lovely time. There was the one other gay guy at the wedding who was there. He was lovely, Uncle Steve. No, no. one of the two other gay guys at the wedding. Well, I just, well, I, well Uncle Steve was there. Uh, when I went to your house, when I went to see your new house that you bought your mom, Uncle Steve showed me his fit. Uncle Steve fit was very cute. It was brown and blue. Mm-hmm. He ended up not wearing it. Why? He gave, it to his, he gave it to my Uncle Ray, his brother, because my Uncle Ray didn't bring any clothes. My Uncle Ray just showed up in town and did not bring wedding clothes. They were like, did he know what? he was going to the wedding? Yes, he came for the wedding, but he ended up not having anything. Uncle, my Uncle Steve was so fucking excited about this outfit. He'd been showing I everyone. Know. And then I looked up, my Uncle Ray was wearing it. And I was like, Uncle Steve, you're, I mean, you better than me, because I'd have been like, nigga, go buy, go to the store. Buy some slacks. I want to talk about this food thing before we move on. We're, we're getting too far away from it. Okay, I, I need to remember. Wait, one other thing real quick. Why were you at a table? Wait, did you and Justin have the same friends in high school? Why were you at a at a table with your friends from high school at Justin's wedding? Because it was the bride and groom, and then all the bridesmaids were at one table, and all the grooms were at one table. So you and Justin had like a lot of crossover friends. I mean, it's not about. I wasn't sitting with my. I wasn't sitting with my friends. There was a table just full of groomsmen. So because I'm Justin's groomsman, I was at the table with the groomsmen. They were all friends because they still talk. So, but it didn't matter because knew I was once part upon of a time. I mean, I knew like I knew like two of them. Got it. Some of them were older than me, and, and we never had any conversation. But I was just at the table with the groomsmen. Okay. And there were a bunch of bridesmaids at the table because they were all bridesmaids. So they were connected through our connection to the 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 wedding party. Okay, food. The wedding people. So this lady was like, I. Wanted to see the vegetarian option because, you know, I'm not vegan, but sometimes I just get the vegan option. And I'm like, I actually feel like if you're not vegan, you probably should not just be getting the vegan option because there's probably very few of them. And it's probably counted for the vegans. So usually when you're at a thing like this, they call it beforehand. Like at my brother's wedding, there was like a thing beforehand being like, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? So you get the vegan option. And there's usually very, very few vegan options. Um, so I feel like if you can eat the meat and you're not vegetarian, just eat it because there might be a vegetarian who might not get it because you took the vegan option. Okay. A so vegan, specifically vegan, not just a vegetarian, but like the vegan, the vegan option. So she did not RSVP that she like, when do you do She didn't do that. She, she showed, she RSVP'd a meat option. There were no option. RSVPs at Ellie's wedding. Okay. It was a little bit different. Um, they presented a menu to you when you're at the table and you could choose from the menu. But the menu oh. had all meat objects, and then if you wanted something vegetarian or vegan, you had to say, I'm vegetarian or I'm vegan. 
Oh well, at the, okay. I feel differently. If it's if an, if it's an RSVP and you RSVP for the chicken and you get it, like you know what? I want to get the vegan thing instead. I think that no, you can't, no, you can't switch do your that. food. You can't switch your food, right? But if they're presenting with options, like if there was a drought, if if, if there was not enough available for how many people they're guesstimating, then they wouldn't offer you the option. But if they offer you the option, they don't want to eat meat. This is well, it's in your prerogative to be like, well, you know, I want to. They eat don't that. know though because they didn't. They didn't. I don't know if they even checked how many. They didn't give any dietary checks or anything beforehand, so we don't even know how many vegan. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. means, which means they didn't have like I, I a threshold. Mean, I mean, maybe you did it for me or something. Yeah, which, we, my, we we did we did. Oh, territory. yeah. See, so these these people, I'm like, uh, yeah. So the, which which I'm, the reason I did that before was to guesstimate. You know what I mean? So if she had to yeah. do that and she didn't, then that's shit. So this is what I'm saying. If they if they were checking to see how many vegans there were, they probably have a they more than anyway. If it's not a hard fast rule, it's just something I do. It's it's kind of like it's kind of like a rule that I have is when you all order pizza, if you're not for me. I don't eat the cheese pizza because a vegetarian might want the cheese pizza. I just eat the pizza with the meat on it because I can do that and I don't have any moral conundrum. I won't get sick and it's not outside of my dietary restrictions. So I don't eat the cheese pizza because I I feel like I don't it's not like a hard and fast rule but I but I but for me I would like to leave that option. I think it's because I was vegan for so long and I was vegetarian for even longer. Um, that I know how it is to be there, and then like all the fucking options for you are just gone because someone was like, I just felt like eating the cheese pizza. It is it is very hard when you are vegan or vegetarian, and then that option is just getting ravaged. Um, what's your favorite part of a wedding? I, I you know okay, I still don't love weddings, and 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 I and I also felt bad because Jacob's mom was like, all right, I know you don't love weddings. How was this one? I was like, I didn't dislike it, but like I don't love weddings, like. Like I, 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 well, Rose is an avid listener of Sibling Rivalry, so she probably heard you spit some. I don't know that Rose w- is an avid listener, but she, or she listen from time to time. So she probably tuned um, into one where you were, where you Rose, were spitting I, your I, vitriol I was very on honest. weddings. I was very honest, and I said, um, I said, you know, I, I enjoy, I enjoy myself, which is true. But you know, how some people just love weddings. Yeah, that's not me. Yeah, I'm not. A, I, I don't, don't love weddings. weddings. I'm not like, oh my god. Oh, some people I mean, fucking. <sighs> If it was like a really close Love friend, weddings. like I still, this, those two weddings I went to uh, with Andy, I didn't know those people. I had met one of them one time. I don't time. know them. I, I know them niggas. I know them white niggas. Uh, like I didn't know them. Like I never, I met uh, the second one. I had met her. Um, uh, we, 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 we met once in New York with Andy. No, and we, we, we. So I didn't know that, but I, because a wedding is so beautiful. I still like tear it up, like at the ceremony part where these people are. Because I think it's, it is a really beautiful thing to, like, do this, like, public display of your love and, like, quote-unquote commit to someone for the rest of your life, essentially. So I, I don't notice people, but I still get emotional. So that part of weddings, I think, is very beautiful, whether I knew these people clearly or not a lot. So I could imagine that being, like, a very close friend getting married. I don't, I, none of my very close friends have gotten married. None of my – I've not ever been in a wedding. I've never participated in – I have when I was younger for the family members. Um, but yeah, I, so I could imagine if you got married or if Patty got married or Kennedy or Mateo or Nick, I, I would be, I would be, I would feel very emotional because I'm like, that's just so beautiful. Such a beautiful display of your love to this person. I didn't tear up at either wedding. Um, really either one. I, I did not tear up at all. Um, but also I also Damn, had basically bitch. No emotional response when you tell me about scissors. So apparently I'm, I'm a cold, cold ass bitch. Get frost chills. Um, um, and I mean, did you cry, Jacob, at either wedding? Ezra cried at my brother's wedding, mm-hmm. and did you cry? At, you didn't cry at Ellie's wedding. Um, but no, I um, I did not. I did not tear up at all. But that doesn't mean I wasn't moved. I just didn't tear up. Mm-hmm. I was moved by Justin's wedding. It was it was very wonderful to see Justin. So happy and very wonderful to see Lindsay, my sister-in-law. Um, my sister's wedding. Drag uh, it. Damn. Well, I had a, I, I have less emotional connection to Ellie than I do Justin, plot twist. Um, but Eliana's wedding was very beautiful. And um, it was very nice to sit uh, so close to Jacob's father who cries at everything. I mean, Jacob's father will cry. Will cry. I mean, I'm telling you. If you just like slow down the way you're talking and hold his hand and express gratitude and crack your voice a little, he literally will start crying. And I don't think that's an exaggeration. Dean 
Ritz be crying in these streets. Andy, Andy's, Andy cries. At both when he went to Andy, definitely like he like not like boo hoo look inconsolable, but he was like, oh my god. When with me, I just got like a little misty. But Andy, no, Dean Ritz crying. was Dean Ritz was going through it like inconsolable, Dean, not inconsolable, but like never um like during the service. Very few moments when I looked at where he wasn't actively crying. Like, like, the, like Jacob and his mom had a thing where they literally had tissues on standby for Ellie, but mostly for Dean Ritz, which is 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 actually very charming to see that. And Dean and Dean was baby. Okay, so this like little like sixteen year old Turkish kid was like going off. He was dancing, like dancing, dancing. Mm-hmm. And then Dean was like, "Bitch, let me." He didn't say these words. Dean would never saw this. He was like, "Oh, I'm gonna show you how to dance, honey." So Dean hit the motherfucking dance floor and started twirling. Because Dean's like a like a trained ballet dancer. Dean was fucking hitting the spins. Dean was getting low. Dean was popping up. Dean was juggling. Dean started juggling on, on the dance the floor. dance floor. And That's Dean was wild. like, "Let me show you how it's done, honey. I'm doing multiple disciplines. I'm juggling. There's ballet. There's horror, bitch. There's all of this, honey. Your little your little young knees cannot compete with the years of experience. Sit down." So now, with the music, did they play top Bitch, 40? They started juggling. I was like, you better work. Did they, stop, did they play top 40 stuff, too? Or, like, what type yeah, like, of music was, was the band, vibe? There was a band playing a bunch of, I, I want to sound say this without sounding offensive, a, a band? band playing a bunch of, like, Jewish-sounding songs, like, traditional. Like, there was, like, a like Hava Nagila was playing. Love Hava and Nagila. Like, and other songs that are like from Havana, Jewish, Havana, Havana, but it was a different version. It sounded, it sounded a little different. I actually might be able to put up some videos of. Uh, there was some great. Anyway, I actually won't put up videos of the way. But anyway, it was like there was some. There was and then and then and then there was a. So the band left. And then I love like, a live band. I love a live band at a wedding. It is. I know it's then, very expensive, but a live band at a wedding, mm-hmm. bitch, everything. And then only the horn section stayed. And the horns, there was a trumpet and a trombone, and they played top 40, like top 40 throughout the like decades. They played top 40, and they were like just doing the horn section. They played like Rihanna's like Yellow Diamonds in the Sky, and they played like we found Live. Love. So to clarify, there was a DJ who started playing music, and then there were two live horn players who were punching it up with live horn performances for the horns in each song. Really quick, as we're on the topic of this, are you have you seen these videos of the of the of the Miami Boys Jewish Choir? Baby, I'm obsessed. It is so. I can't tell. I can't tell if it's bullying, or if it's just like celebrating, like like things going viral bullying. today. The line between oh, like bullying, you can tell people are like making fun of it, or like they genuinely like are because enjoying because these it. boys are genuinely talented. They They're are very singing. good. They're just singing but, down. But I think, but it's kind of like, but sometimes, but 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 it is like this, like Jewish boy group, like like they are like, so part, there is a part of this, like there, I can see why this is funny because the way the videos are edited, it's it's giving nineteen nineties like we are the world concert, like videos are crossfading, yeah, and these like it's guys very stylized. are stylized, yeah, and these boys are like singing r- these crazy notes. So I'm part of me is like I can't. This, but they are very talented. They're really good. Well, a lot of some of them have like come forward. They're like, "This oh, was me in the video, like singing." And like a, a or, lot. Of, or are they not young anymore? Is there are they like grown ass men now? Yes, Bob. These are from the nineties. Yeah, it was like from the two thousands. They're all they're like the early two thousands. They're like they're like grown. A lot of them, like ninety percent of them, 98 percent of them don't do anything in music or arts. The ones that like were they're bitch, they're doctors, they're lawyers. They said fuck that music and art shit, bitch. I'm going to doctor Not law school. Not naming stereotypical Jewish jobs, Monet. That I is... mean, this literally what it's literally what they're talking about. They were like, yeah, I'm not a singer anymore. I'm a lawyer. Or I'm a doctor. Not I'm Monet. Like, not Monet doing the yay, Monet. Yeah, Monet. It's, uh, the video is from 2008, and they were all about 13 in 2008. Yeah. So wait, 2008. So they're like the same age as me. They're all in their. 30s right now. Monet's, Monet's like, they're accountants. They are doctors. They are. The bitch, they said, fuck that music shit. I'm doing, I'm like getting like, an, and again, but also I can like, looking back, like being so talented, and again, I get it. Music and like the artist life is not for everyone. It is a hard thing. So a lot of people 
who really want to die for their art and like want to do it. It is a really big commitment and it's not for a lot of people, especially when you can get a more lucrative job that can take care of you in a better way. I guess it's not for everybody, but I cannot imagine like seeing videos of yourself where you're so talented, you're so good at what you do and you're not pursuing that like art thing. Like I'm like, bitch, yeah. But again, it's such a crap shoot. You never know how far it's going to take you, how you're really going to, and how you're really going to make money. So I get it. Maybe somebody feels that way about you and cooking. I, Someone's I, like, wow, one is a really good cook. I have and a she question. Decided as well. And she's she just like, isn't, Finishing up her cooking career, you know? You know, I did take a class when I was younger. My mom had me cooking classes. I learned, I mean, the first thing they told me I had to make was cinnamon rolls. They were allowed to make, like, pizza from scratch. And, like, I was really, for a moment, that I was really going to go down the cooking thing and do cooking. But I, um, like, it was, like, it was the summer after that. I, like, left St. Lucia and, like, went and in the States and then just cooking stuff just, you know. But th they're well, also all like really young children. So doesn't like when your voice go through puberty, doesn't it change and become worse? So isn't it possible that they were all like f on fire when they were eleven, but well, now when, like lost it? When your voice drops and you and you are changing voice part, because a lot of them are are tenors and alt I mean are sopranos and altos, their voices will shift. But if you if you are going if you're having vocal lessons and you and you and you and you are pursuing like your voice like. You know, just like how you take piano, you take violin. If you're working through that voice change, you're, you just don't stop being able to learn how to sing. Your voice is just shifting. It's dropping. I was covering my mouth because I realized I was, uh, I was like listening, but I was just like, I don't know, like <laughs> dumb as hell. Um, I was that kid. My mom. No I, one shocked. Color, no I one shocked. I was always a kid like, and my grandmother, we call them, as I said, Mammy, she'd be like, boy. <laughs> I'm sorry. That I'm sorry. As an American, yeah, it doesn't have black, the same American, connotation. I know, I know. You said recipe. this. It is my knee jerk response to you calling your grip, uh, mammy, and she's like, "Boy, close your mouth." And then what I would, and then she, and then she, she would tell me, "If you keep your mouth open." And I believe this. She, she was the same one that told me if I, this is why I never bit my fingernails. That if I was to bite my fingernails, it's actually slow poison for your body, and you will die faster. So I and I never bit my fingernails after that. I was like, she was like, yep. Yeah, Look how long your nails are now. You really, <laughs> no. really. She was like, every time you bite your fingernails, it's slow poison. So you're gonna you're killing yourself early. I was like, really? She's like, yeah. She's also what was it talking about? Oh, she's like, and if you keep your mouth open. Flies are gonna fly in there and lay eggs, and it's gonna and it's gonna eat your brain. And you're gonna die, and then. But I would that didn't stop me, honey. I was always like, okay, so so so, Mammy's where you got your gaslighting from? Because because you, you are this is wild. What did you no, call that my grandmother? Is, uh, you told me to call her Mammy. What 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 you talking about? Like shut the fuck up. Y'all hear this shit? Y'all hear this shit? Y'all hear, hear this nigga said? Y'all hear this nigga said? You don't want calling this woman man. This is anyway. Um, I, um, wait, what were we talking about? Uh, oh, my mother always said, my mother always said, we would always, whenever someone had their mouth open, she always, she'd always point out that they look dumb. So I, we just like, so I always like, also someone pointed this out and I'm telling you, yeah, once I, someone said this, I read this comment and you can, I've said it on the podcast before, you can never unsee this. What? You will never unsee this. What? Monet's mouth is never closed in any picture she takes. And I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking you you will you will scroll through my, you will I mean there will be some but you will be scrolling in like 99.9 percent of Monet's okay picture. now you change it okay if you, you Monet's mouth be a gape okay that's you fine that's what like, I do Bob you I'm, too, not, I'm not saying things wrong with it that's I'm not saying things wrong with it I'm just saying it's damn you listen you feeling attacked has nothing to do with me so your mouth out. so so your mouth just be just be closing all your pictures no, my mouth is closed in like a lot of my pictures, though. If you look at look. pictures, there's, there's quite look. often that my mouth is closed in pictures. Yeah. Well, good at closing pictures because they show you because you sure to don't stop fucking talking. Look at you try so hard to get that out. Look at you. You try so hard. You, 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 yeah, you know, I, I can't find that one, one guy. I can't find one with your mouth closed, Bob. I keep laughing at that one guy who uh, who comes for us. And he started calling you stuttering. Yeah, I have a speech impediment. Nigga, your mouth is always open too. What is your point, nigga? Money, money. This is not an attack on you. You feel yes, it is. You're attacking me. Also, my mouth is completely closed in this picture. You're, you're not. You're not searching. I can't see your camera's so blurry. We can't see your camera's blurry, honey. My mouth is completely closed in that picture. My mouth is completely closed in this picture. You are. You. You. Really honey, are you're blurry, hard. honey. You're my mouth blurry. is closed in this. My mouth is closed in this picture. Do you know what's not closing right now? 
And you know what? My mouth, we, is, not, my mouth is closed in this picture. It's blurry. Bitch. My mouth is closed in this picture. No, my mouth is wide open. Um, but yeah. Okay, my, wait. I, it, before we close it's this It's not an attack. Before we close this, 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 podcast, this thing out. So have you... You know, anyway, close this. You don't. Don't be trying to. We're rush almost us at off. an hour. Anyway, don't don't ever don't rush I, our listeners away. Anyway, don't rush our listeners away. So you once famously said on this podcast that you didn't want to get married. Yada yada yada. Now after going to a couple weddings, how do you feel about marriage now? Do you, is that something you see for yourself? Would you want to? Yes. Well, did no, I say I don't want to so. get? I, I said I, I think I might say I don't want to have a wedding. I don't know if I said I don't want to get married. Okay, you don't want to have a wedding. Sure. Would do you? Do you want to have a wedding now? Um, I might have a wedding now. Um, it. it your wedding. Be a oh small. yeah, your wedding tour. Yeah, what, what New York, Atlanta? It, it'd still be small. And like how? What's small? Like how many guests? Fifty or less. Thirty, twenty. Are you taking into account your like for your side or your partners as well? Like all together? Yeah, all together, like like fifty people or less. Bob, twenty, so twenty five. Only twenty five people are invited um, for for you to go to, for, on your side of the wedding. But like, uh, like I'm not. It's not gonna be a big thing. Like I'm probably gonna do it in like a backyard. You're like I don't. I'm not gonna go to like 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 like. I was talking to someone at this wedding who was like, "I'm getting married at the fucking Met Stadium." I was like, "What in the world?" Were they like, like serious or they're joking? Dead ass. They were like, "We're getting married at the fucking Met How Stadium." How much money does that cost? Her her dad is a lawyer. I mean, so they don't plan lot, on apparently. they don't plan on filling it out. Surely, bitch, be uh, no. In the state, there's like a room, a classy room that overlooks the field, and it's in that room. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, but Bobby, your family alone is rolling twenty deep. But they also probably don't all want to come. I mean, so like a lot of folks, a lot of folks, in my family's been married, and I've and I've been to only my brother's wedding. The only yeah, wedding in my family I've been to are my brothers, both of them. <laughs> we'll say when we went to Bob's brother's wedding, there were thirteen people staying at his mom's house. Yeah, bitch. And my mom was like, "Why don't you and Ezra and, and Jacob stay here?" And I was like, "This is mom. Sleep where? Sleep where?" There was a bed in the dining room. Oh my god! I was like, "This is wild." My mom, and Jacob, was very good. But like, there is like, I could buy my mom the fucking like Yankee Stadium. She would fill it. Like, no matter how many rooms, she will fill up every room in the house. It is, my mom is wild. I'm the opposite. I don't want nobody staying with me. Nobody don't stay with me. Everybody go find a place to stay. My mom is the same way, though. My mom would let, have everyone stay by her. I'm not, I'm not at that same. Because when I have people stay by me, I feel a lot of pressure. Like, I feel like I need to go shopping, fill up the house with snacks and drinks and food for them. I'll go buy like a, a blow up bed. Like, you know, in my place here in, in, in LA, Dwan and Arcia and their friends often come and stay here. And I just feel pressure to make sure that everyone has all the things they need. I can't believe you're at home. You didn't invite me over. Believe it. Honestly, I do believe it. All right. Thanks, everyone. See y'all later. Yeah. Then don't forget it. Have a good night, y'all. No, y'all have a good night because I said it. Oh my God. Mwah. Okay. My God. Okay. <laughs> You're such a child. You're ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, you are. And you are.